All right, so we are going to look at connecting pH to the relative amounts that we would see of various weak acid, weak base reaction species. And so we've already talked about strong acids and strong bases in solution and how they influence pH, but now we wanna connect that to our weak acids or weak bases. And again, our weak acids, weak bases undergo equilibrium reactions. And so we're gonna focus on how do those equilibrium reactions connect back to what the pH is. And so we're gonna express this visually in what, we, in what we call a ladder diagram or a pH distribution diagram. So we're gonna look at those two <coughs> as we connect this back to what uh, we would observe as the primary species in solution. And we're gonna see these two connect to each other. So let's go ahead and first talk about a ladder diagram versus a pH diagram. So a ladder diagram, what this is doing is this is going to express the primary species in an equilibrium reaction versus the pH of our solution. So again, we have our acetic acid reaction here and it's reacting with water to give us our hydronium ion and the acetate ion. So we have this acid-base equilibrium reaction uh, and we would see the pKa is 4.76 and again our pKa is the negative log of our Ka value. So Depending on the relative amounts of our hydronium ion here, we'll see this is gonna be important here, based upon our pH, this equilibrium, if we think of Le Chatelet's principle, is gonna either favor our reactants or favor our products. And because of that, we're either gonna have a primary amount of the acetic acid and acetate being an acetic acid form, or we're gonna have the majority of it be in the acetate form. Now, how can we identify, you know, at what place that this actually occurs? Well, at our pKa, what we'll notice is that uh, our concentrations of these two species are equal to each other. Excuse me, when our pH of the solution is equal to the pKa, the concentration of our acid and base, weak acid, conjugate base uh, solution in the solution are equal. Now, anything other than where our pH equals our pKa, we're either gonna have primarily more of the base than the acid, or more of the acid than the base. And so if we are below uh, uh, the pH is below our pKa, we notice that it would make sense we mostly have more of the acidic species. If our pK, our pH is above the pKa, we would notice that it makes sense we primarily have the basic species. Now why is the case? We'll talk about this in class, but here we're just gonna see, we can visualize this using a ladder diagram. And all a ladder diagram does is gives us an arrow that says as we go up our pH increases, uh, and then we draw in a line here to represent the place where our pH will equal our pKa, and above that pH we're gonna pri primarily have the base of this reaction and below that pH we're primarily going to have the acid of that. We also, if we want to maybe get a little bit more fine detail into this, we can have a pH distribution diagram and that's what we have here. This is all the same information. So this is again for our acetic acid. If we were to track down and find the place where those two concentrations are equal, our acetate and our acetic acid, we would notice that that would be our pKa value, uh, where, which is 4.76. So this is the place where our pH equals our pKa. Uh, and we see if we're above that, we're gonna have, if we go above here, we're gonna have more of our base. Uh, if we're below that, we're gonna have more of our acid species. And again, this is our relative abundance versus pH that we would see here. So this gives us a little bit more detail. It doesn't just say we more have 
more of our acid below that pH, we have more of our base above that pH, but what it does, it gives us a relative amount. So it gives us a little bit more fine detail in being able to, to look at the relative amounts of these. But when we're doing an analysis, it may be that we just need to have most of it be in a specific form, either in the base form or the acid form, and that's where we could use our ladder diagram. But we see there's a direct connection here, is that we have this pH place where our pH equals our pKa, and that tells us something about the relative uh, amounts that we'd have of those two species. So now let's go ahead and apply this to another um, uh, acid-based reaction. Here we have P-nitrophenol, has a different pKa, so a higher pKa, and so we have our basic species and we have our acidic species. So we can say this is our HA, and this is our A minus. And above that pH, where our pH is above 7.15, we will see we mostly have the basic form. If it's below that, we're gonna mostly have the acidic form. Now we have this ladder diagram that just says, okay, well above this, there's a certain amount, and below this, there's uh, more of the acidic form. But if we wanna maybe connect this to a diagram that expresses the relative amounts of those, to the right of this, we just have a blank uh, diagram. And so let's go ahead. We start with our pH equals our pKa. So uh, add a pH of 7.15. So that looks like uh, maybe right here. And if we go to our halfway point where we're gonna have half of one and half of the other, we can then go ahead and diagram and say, we're going to have this kind of reflection where this is going to be, and again, this would be our basic form, is gonna be mostly above the pH. We'll, we'll mostly have that basic form. And then we also can see that we have our acidic form here uh, above, uh, excuse me, below that um, pH. And so we have the ability to diagram that here uh, with our concentration and pH diagram. So we have the ability to connect these and we see this linker here is this place where our pH equals our pKa. Now why is this important? This is important because maybe we have, we don't just have acetic acid, maybe we don't just have P-nitrophenol, maybe we have a couple of these different acid-based species in solution and what we're usually going to do is we're actually going to combine these into a ladder diagram that includes both of them. So for example, if I have some kind of analysis where I need to have maybe the protonated form of our P-nitrophenol, and I need to have the deprotonated form of my acetic acid, what I would notice is that rather than trying to figure that out, do some calculations with my combined ladder diagram, again, we have our pH, and then we see here below a, a pH of 7.15, we're gonna have that protonated form of our P-nitrophenol. Above a pH of 4.74, we're gonna have our acetic acid here be primarily in the acetate form. And so in this range between a pH of 4.74 to 7.15, we're gonna have the ability to do this analysis that would include both of them being deep, or sorry, our acetic acid being deprotonated and our P-nitrophenol being protonated. Or maybe we have one where we know, well actually I need this to be acidic and I need both of these to be protonated and primarily in the acidic form. That would tell me I have to have this solution be buffered at a pH that is below 4.74 to give us the place where we have uh, both of these being protonated. So we see we have the ability to combine these ladder diagrams that provide some extra information to us. So now what I want you to do is go ahead and apply this. So go ahead and pause and then practice this your own. Draw a combined ladder diagram for HF and acetic acid. Uh, and we're going to complete this analysis for a solution containing both of these, so we need to know the relative amounts of each of those. During this analysis, it requires the primary species to be F- and our acetic acid. From our ladder diagram, identify the pH range in which this analysis would take place, and I gave you the pKa for HF. So why don't you go ahead and do that. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to draw our ladder diagram here and observe that in order for us to have the place where we have our basic form of our hydrofluoric acid and the acidic form of our, our acetic acid, 
we're gonna need to have a pH buffered in between 3.17, the pKa of our HF, and 4.74, because we know above a pH of 3.17, we're primarily gonna have our fluoride ion, and below a pH of 4.74, we're primarily gonna have the acetic acid form. And this gives us the ability to visualize this very quickly, jump to this diagram, and identify our pH range that we would need to do. So we're gonna take this information and we're gonna apply it towards uh, a few other acid-base equilibrium reactions, and then we're also gonna con connect that to a specific type of analysis that we were gonna look at for these acid-base equilibria that requires us maybe to be in the protonated form or the deprotonated form of a weak acid or a weak base. So hopefully this gives us a good understanding of ladder diagrams and their usefulness in our analysis.